So as I sort of wrap up the presentation, we find ourselves in a particularly interesting place in the world. Excuse me. We're in this sort of liminal state of post-normalcy where we've got the history of how we got to today and all of the hard work that came from our relatives and the legacy of the agricultural industry. And then we've got this bright, amazing possible future ahead of us. But we're in this little state of post-normality where we don't know what's happening and what's going to help, help us to get there and how we're going to come together to think our way through this. But when we start to explore our unknown futures, we can consider cultural shifts, build bigger vision, strengthen strategic planning, and anticipate risks today. And this is the core of my business, is working with people to explore the unknown unknowns and the known unknowns, the things that we could never predict were going to come. So, you know, looking at principles, what, what good principles are we going to establish for us as a business, like humans first, sustainability and such like finding those signals and trends very much like we did in this presentation and every engagement I do has got this kind of work in it what if we start to build out some more complex stories and scenarios you know what if scenarios what if in the year 2040 we employ renewable energy and uh, cellular protein supply and we can build stories around that and then we can build speculative futures these could be illustrations they could be books they could be short stories and then what if we consider all of them across the things that we need to, to run our businesses? So the dimensions of financial operations, organizational um, considerations, regulations, culture, environment, political considerations, technology, and even societal and social elements as well. And we can start to look out what we need to build and then from those futures backcast and take evidence of how the world's going to change. Now, about three or four years ago, I've worked with uh, YVR Airport in uh, Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And I worked with them and they said, okay, we need a vision for the world in 2037. Every 10 years, um, there's a 20 year planning cycle. And it's typical for most airports across the world. And they said, how can we inspire people in British Columbia and in Vancouver to get involved in the conversation about our futures and to shape it in a new way? And I said, okay, leave it with me. After about three or four weeks, I came back with five science fiction stories that, that told these raw, visceral visions of what the world would look like in 2037. And here's a short video that promoted that and really generated a lot of interest. Plans for the future of YVR are taking shape. Our 2037 master plan is a blueprint for an airport that'll continue to reflect the best of BC. Sustainable, welcoming, and diverse. YVR will be a feast for the senses a hive of activity and interaction, a business hub for entrepreneurs, and a unique retail experience that is second to none. Help shape the future of our world-class sustainable airport by attending public meetings and sharing your input online. So myself and the CEO president of YVR Airport, we did a, a big media tour um, and we planned to have five sessions with people and we, they booked out immediately. In fact, those five sessions became 12 sessions and we were just going to do Vancouver and then we had to include three other cities in Greater Vancouver metro region. So th this became a huge success and the visions of what the futures could be for this particular operations was really ignited and it came from people that, that got involved. So think about this in the agriculture industry, maybe like the consumers, the partners, you know, the supermarkets, everyone can get together to start to work out what our futures are. What was fascinating about this was like just in the last couple of years, they actually implemented this uh, glass in island forest with access to the outside which is almost exactly the same as the in-terminal vertical farm that I imagined as part of my science fiction stories. Whilst it's not growing food there right now, it possibly could in the future. But this is so inspirational to me to see, to think about, okay, how some of these bright ideas of creative, curious um, sort of explorations of our futures can actually become real things. And that's it with this keynote. This is about helping you shift your mindset from what is to what if. And what if the world could be different? What if we can challenge the way that we work? What if we can continue to create resilient agricultural and agribusiness operations? And what if, you know, the things that established society at large 10,000 years ago, agricultural food supply at scale, can actually go forward and, and meet the demands of a population growth around the world? And it's interesting to me. I was chatting to Rene earlier and said, I, I'm so excited about speaking to you all. I'm so excited about the agricultural industry. 
because it's this is the thing that's meant that we've been able to grow society and be here today. And I think that all of you online are going to be part of the solutions and the big thinking about our futures going forward. And I think that we've got a new paradigm of thinking that I call infinite humanity. And yes, we're still going to have you know, exponential information. We're going to have self-driving transportation, uh, artificial intelligence behind that. We're also going to have renewable energy. But I think biology is going to play a huge role. But I also thinking, think that having a huge worldview is, is one of the most important dimensions that we can have. It's these five things that interplay that create a new vision of how the world works. And my book actually goes into this in some depth. And that's it. Agricultural futures, where are we going to go and what's likely going to happen? Mm -hmm.